Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Another episode of Just In Time. It's beautiful weather outside, so we're gonna film inside again today. We'll probably be doing a good bit of this throughout the winter months. Um, I'm gonna read some scriptures in Hebrews chapter 12. I read these scriptures back, it's been several weeks ago, and they've stuck with me. So this is something that I want to read a scripture and then i'll discuss what we're going to talk about i'm going to just start with verse 1 in chapter 12 of hebrews wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction for, of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto the blood striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasteneth us after their own pleasure, but he of our profit, that we might be partakers in his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and feeble knees, and make straight the paths of your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I read scriptures about God chastising people. Reading that, we well know that if God loves us, that he's going to get on to us. He's going to punish us for wrongs. There's been times in my life that I have had times and periods that I went through that I knew God was punishing me. I knew God was holding back blessings because of maybe something that I had did. It's easy to ignore that and try to just say, well, I don't understand what's going on and not really want to acknowledge that I was wrong in a particular thing and I know that. Most of the time as people, if we will look at our lives honestly, we can look back and say, you know what? I really wasn't right there. I did some wrong there, and that's that's why I'm going through now what, what I'm going through. A lot of you have faced persecution or punishment or chastisement and just really unwilling to admit that God's trying to teach me a lesson here. You know, if you'll accept that and realize it and learn that lesson, Go ahead and realize, you know what, I did wrong. I don't need to do that no more. You can shorten that term of punishment. Because God's not up there just trying to punish us for his pleasure. 
He don't enjoy seeing us suffer. I have a little boy, gets into some stuff. I love him with everything that's within me. But when I see him doing wrong, I have to get on to him. And most of the time, it's because I don't want him to get hurt. I tell him, you can't do this. And I punish him because I know if he keeps doing that, he's going to get hurt. Because I'm wise enough that I've already been through that. I've already seen what becomes of this action. I know the consequences of it. Get off the back of the couch. You're going to fall and have a knot on your head. And then he gets up there and does it again. Well, at some point, I've got to give him a spanking. I know a lot of people will say, oh, don't spank a child. The Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. Now, I do not believe in abuse, but neither does my Father in heaven. He's not going to abuse me. He's not going to put me through things that are not for my own good. We can lie to ourselves and say, oh, I don't need to go. I don't, there's no point in punishing. You know, I, but if God don't punish us, we don't, we don't learn nothing. It's said that he chastiseth those that he loves. If he don't love you, he's going to let you just aimlessly wander through whatever misery and pain. There's a lot of things that we've made bad choices in our life. And got involved in sin. And there's scars that remain in our life. But God allows that scar to remain. As a reminder. To not go back and make that mistake again. Don't go back to those things that have caused you pain. So pay attention. Whenever you start feeling like. Well God's allowed me to. He's removed my blessings. I had a man tell me one time, he said that he was involved in, in something with a church that he decided later on was a mistake. It was had to do with a with a preacher that was there. They had some problems and the board kind of got together and asked the preacher to leave. And they thought they were doing the right thing. But he told me, he said, ever since that, God took my blessings away. And you know, at some point, I wondered if the man ever really got down on his knees and said, you know what, God, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I repent of this. I don't know that he did or didn't. I, I have no way of knowing. I did not ask the man. He volunteered the information that I just shared with you. And I didn't ask him any more about it. I just put it up here and thought on it for a while. If I know that I have made a mistake and I feel like God is punishing me, I want to be able to sit down and look at my life and go, okay, I may have not have thought I was wrong at the time, but was I? Because y'all, we're humans. We're not, none of us perfect. We're going to make mistakes even on our best day. But to be blatantly refusing to acknowledge that we made a mistake or was wrong. We're lost cause then. Just because I may have made my mind up, well, I want, I want it to be this way, don't mean that that's God's way. There's a lot of times as a Christian, I view things in the way that I want to view it. And I, I say, well, this is what God expects of man. But I've always got to be willing to hear the voice of God or recognize when God's trying to get on to me or punish me or teach me or lead me. And I have got to learn to see that God is at work in my life and know that, you know what? I was wrong there. Or either, you know what? I've got to change my way of thinking here. Even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it's not easy. Because he came down, people, and allowed himself to be nailed to a cross. Nails drove through his hands. Nails drove through his feet. Beat with a whip. Crown of thorns beat into his head. Mocked. Spit on. 
laughed at, made fun of, paraded up the streets, hung on a cross, pierced in the side, give vinegar to drink. They tortured the man. And he went through all of that because he knew that this is what's got to be done. And here we sit trying to live a life claiming that I am a Christian and we don't expect to face any hardships. We don't expect to have to make any sacrifices. We're unwilling to give up things in our life just because I like this. And sometimes we partake in things and then there's consequences to it or punishment that comes. And then we refuse to accept the fact that that's God punishing me. And only you can know that it is. I can't look at somebody's pain in their life and go, well, that's because they did this. I can't judge that person like that. But you can judge yourself. You can look deep inside your heart and know what you're feeling. Know that, you know what, I felt guilty about this. Or I felt like God was getting on to me. And with those scriptures, it says that, that God chasteneth those that he loves. And you know what? Paul said one time that it's a pleasure to get to, to, to go through sacrifice for God, for the name of Jesus Christ. He said it's a blessing to be punished and persecuted because every time they do something to me and I keep a right attitude, that's a jewel that goes into that crown. That, that's, that's treasure in heaven. God don't allow you to go through anything for his name's sake, that he don't see. Every sacrifice you make, every every pain that you, every difficulty, people will say, well, I'm not going to give this up because I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, you know what? If it remotely, the Bible mentions it negatively and there's question about it, do you not think that God's not going to bless you if you say, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice this because it's questionable or because it, it may not be right. I'm not sure about it. Because I've said it before, we've got one shot at getting this right. We've got one chance to make it to heaven. And we expect as Christians in this modern day and age to breeze through it with no sacrifice. It's not supposed to cost me anything. God is love and he's this giant teddy bear in the sky and he's never going to punish me for nothing. He wouldn't do that to people that he loves. And they fail to remember that in Noah's day he wiped the whole, everything on creation out except Noah and his family. He killed every plant, every tree, everything that was there. He drowned it with water. Sodom and Gomorrah, he burned with fire. Destroyed the Tower of Babel. Sent people in every direction. He turned Lot's wife to a pillar of salt just for looking back. Time after time, I can see a people that were wiped out. You look at the Pharaoh of Egypt. Because he held the children of Israel captive and wouldn't let them go, God sent plague after plague after plague and then killed every firstborn child. And you think God is just love. God is love. But he's also, he said, vengeance is mine. And sometimes we don't understand that. But there's consequences to wrong actions. There's consequences to sin in our life. Sometimes we make mistakes and God has to punish us and say, you, you can't do that. You, you can't, I don't accept that. Because it said God is holy. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. You've got to be like him. No, we'll never be exactly that holy. We'll never measure up. We'll never actually accomplish this. But we've got to keep trying to do the best we can. And a half-hearted effort ain't going to cut it, y'all. 80 years to 100 years on this earth is nothing in the face of eternity. Every sacrifice that I make in this life 
will be well worth it when I stand on the other side. My grandpa had an old saying. He said, son, I'd rather have too much corn in the crib when winter came than not enough. Those words go a long way. So for those of you that may be facing some things, persecution, feel like maybe God's punishing you for something, remember that he only does that to those that he loves. He's not doing it just because he enjoys torturing you. He's trying to teach you a lesson. Learn the lesson. Look deep inside of yourself. Question, am I really right? Am I really where I'm supposed to be? More than likely, none of us are really there. We're on our journey to the right, on the right path, trying to get there. And we may all be at different spots along this journey. Some of us may be closer than others. That's why through these videos, from my position, there's people that's closer than I am. I am nowhere near what Paul was, where Enoch was, where a lot of these guys in the Bible. But when I look around and I see that there's people behind me that are nowhere near where I am. And I reach for you. I try to encourage you. I try to give you some information that'll make you think. I know sometimes I make these videos and I feel like, well, I just feel like I'm getting on to people. But then I go, no, I'm helping them. Because even if they disagree with me, they're going to stop and think and go, God, what do you really think about that? What, what does that really mean? If I can make you question where you are and, and, and the way you're thinking about things and, and talk to God about it and say, God, where am I at in this walk? Where's my direction really at? Is my direction and my course of my life really on? That's what it's all about. I want y'all to know that I love each and every one of you no matter who you are, where you're from, no matter if you're still lost in sin, mixed up in things that you know you shouldn't, I still love you the same, whether you're black, white, red, pink, yellow, Indian, Native American, no matter where you're from, Hispanic, German, European, Australian, I, I don't care, Chinese, I love you. I had somebody that kind of pricked me the other day. They accused me of being racist because of a flag they saw in the background. I started to take it down. And I was like, no, if I do that, I acknowledge that, that I thought that was racism and that's the furthest thing from my mind. I want you to know I love every one of you. I love all people the same because God said, how can you love me? If you don't love your brother that you have seen, how can you love God whom you have not seen? There's no room for any hate. There's no room for any bitterness. But there's not room to really offend people. So I want to assure anybody at the end of this video, if you've questioned whether there's racism, it's not. I promise you those flags mean nothing like that to me. Uh, I love all of you. God bless all of you. Remember, if you'll do a little better today than you did yesterday, tomorrow will be a better day. God bless you. Best way to do things is God's way. We'll see y'all.